Thank you all for joining us today to hope happy new year. Hope everybody's well and healthy. Um, and really excited to, to have a conversation of sort about digital dentures and where things are going and where, where perhaps your laboratory, if it's not currently engaged in digital dentures, how can you? What is the proper process or the workflow that you can foresee? And quite truthfully, every dental laboratory may approach this process a little bit differently. So that's what we're going to dive into today, uh, provide you with kind of the workflows of what may or may not resonate with you and your laboratory and also offer some um, really cool, you know, innovations that are up and coming or that are in the market right now and how they can satisfy not only your workflow in your laboratory, but also for your clientele. And ultimately, what are we doing? We're, we're making sure that we're having the best outcome for our patients, which is what's most first and foremost important. So again, this is going to be a digital denture. And again, looking at what solution is right for me. Um, thank you again for joining us so where is technology we have to take a step back because you know quite frankly digital dentures i mean dentures rather have been around for many many years why what is it that's different about digital dentures and why is it getting the buzz that it's getting now certainly we've seen through cad cam and through the evolution of cad cam with in the fixed market and the implants and so on and so forth where there's derived great benefits from digitizing and no different is digital dentures um you know and looking at this it's it's a a opportunity not only to increase the benefit of the prostate the prosthesis for the patient me, meaning making it a better a more holistic Sure to, to form and accuracy and precision, but also looking at the laboratory, the efficiency by which the laboratory can produce digital dentures, the efficiency by which they can turn it around, you know, with requiring less manual dexterity, manual labor, so that the bottom line and the revenue grow in the process. So it is a process that is evolving and is growing. And I would say it's probably in its third or it's in second or third kind of generation of innovations and it certainly is not coming it's already here it's going to get perfected but it's certainly here and it's something that i'm very excited to share with you all and happy that you're all are here so what is technology regardless of digital dentures any kind of technology for our laboratory is it's always what it is that technology does to us in our laboratories and our patients and our clinician and less so of what we do to the technology we have to utilize smart technology and technology can also fall into materials which i'll share with you in a little bit um, you know because that becomes an innovative and smart technology as well so you want to choose wisely what is the process by which you want to really participate in in digital in, in dentistry certainly digital dentures so we've all and i've certainly have been in as the caricature on 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 the one carrying the technology which hasn't fared well we want it's obviously a caricature but we want the machine and the technology to really carry us forward, propel us forward, make our lives and all that it touches much better rather than the other way around. If you have technology in your laboratory that is dragging you down, that is weighing you down, then perhaps you're either utilizing the technology and not in the most optimal way or perhaps it's not the right technology. Technology really is what sets us apart. It's a competitive advantage and it really moves and propels our workflows uh, forward. And we live in a very unique time where digital technology is at our fingertips all the time. I mean, certainly we can attest, you know, and, and you know, maybe I'm going to be aging myself, but I, I remember the days of, you know, perhaps 10 years ago when, you know, online banking was done. I couldn't even fathom the thought of, um, you know, not writing a check and not balancing my checkbook and so on and so forth. And for the last perhaps five, six, seven years, and it might be a little different, I can't recall the last time I wrote out a check. Everything is done digital. So things evolve and so does technology and so do our lives. And that's where I really want you to kind of the mindset in looking at this it, digital dentures, if you haven't already dove into, take a look back as far as five years ago, what we thought of, of the fixed end of things and where things have gotten to in a very rapid way. And I have no doubt, and with that a question of it, uh, that digital dentures will follow the same path and we will find, and laboratories will find different processes that technology will help them achieve that. But it is definitely something that is unique and something that is very um, that will stay for, you know, until the next innovation comes up. But many dental professions and themselves are confused by all the information. 
they they find themselves puzzled they find themselves confused baffled what is it that they need to get and how do they get to the end result so that's where i'm i'm really pleased that you are all here because we'll dive into those um and really be able to hone them in closer what kind of scanner do you need? Is it an intraoral scan? Can you use an intraoral scan? There's different philosophies to that. Do you need a, a 3D printer or do you need a milling machine? And what else is in, in between? What kind of digital workflow? What kind of design? What kind of, you know, these are all options. And again, that's why in the very beginning, I said that it really, the options are there and it's up to the dental laboratory to find the path, which is gonna give them the best level of efficiency. Obviously, you can engage in digital dentures in ways that perhaps utilizes what is currently in your laboratory and then grow from there. Or you may, you may forge ahead with a whole new different kind of workflow that you see for your laboratory. But that is, even though it may sometimes become overwhelming, I look at it as a very big plus because you can set from the ground exactly what will work well with your family, with your, um, your laboratory. And where do you attain that? How do you attain that information? I'm a big believer that knowledge is power and knowledge shared is what we're doing here is power multiply. And that is the true key to success. So thank you again for being here. Now, CAD CAM, and this is not, you know, in, in a silo for digital dentures, this is all CAD benefits. But I thought this slide uh, is a powerful one because in reality, I just want to, again, put into um, preface where a digital technology, CAD CAM, is truly, as far as I'm concerned, just a powerful tool. It is just that. It do, it's not going to do our work. It's not going to fabricate automatically uh, a digital denture, but with the right dental intelligence to, to create or manufacture or fabricate sound uh, removable dentures, with this great tool, you can achieve efficiency and even optimization in a great way. So CAD CAM is a tool, but it's a very, very powerful tool that can provide you with a consistent level of efficiency, precision, as well as complexity. We can do things today that we couldn't have even imagined in analog um, form or analog workflow. Now with digital, we can accomplish that and we can see it all throughout in the profession. No different is digital dentures and I'll discuss that in, the, in a little bit. As well as consistency, you know, having the benefit and the ability of consistently providing that solution um, and repeatedly every single time. That can, that serves in so many ways, not only for the immediate um, you know, satisfaction of having consistency so you're, that your dentists are not, con are not anxious as to what it is that they're going to get, whether one week is different than the other, whether Monday is different than Friday, and so on and so forth. There's a level of consistency that digi digitization provides, but also for the patient. I mean, now you're capturing data sets that can then extrapolate not only for to have a, you know, if something was to happen to the denture, you can reproduce that denture rather rapidly, but it also offers us an opportunity for the, on the clinical side to really assess and look at multiple scans over multiple years to see if there's any anomalies, if there's anything different. And I've actually had a conversation, uh, multiple conversations, and but I'll never forget with one laboratory that by accident found that the patient uh, ended up having a, a tumor, a cancerous tumor, and saved their lives just simply because of the scan that they were able to look. So, but that's on the peripheral. But as far as, you know, actually fabricating a digital denture, it provides us with a consistency every single time. As far as materials are concerned also, we don't have to be as concerned because it's what I consider with, with digitization and CAD CAM an un, unadulterated uh, material. As we know, packing or pressing or, or anything to that effect may produce porosities and create other consequences where with 3D printing or even with milling, those inconsistencies are no longer there because it's void of what um, perhaps could have been introduced in order to create them. And this way you get the same material and the same material complexity as well as the, the structure every single time straight out of, um, out of the manufacturing cycle. So it provides a great, great level of of, of uh, benefits. Now, 
digital dentures, and that's what we're here about. It's the fastest developing uh, market in 2019 and 2020. Now, this is a, um, you know, obviously 2019 and 2020 brought some other surprises. Um, and, uh, you know, this number is $3.6 billion by 2023, which may be skewed a little bit because of the COVID pandemic. However, you can see that the growth of this market is incredible. There are several manufacturers that have developed digital solutions, which we'll dive into, and there are others that are working on it right now. But in in the growth of it is tremendous, and we'll talk about some statistics, but keep in mind about maybe perhaps three or four years ago, um, maybe three years ago, digital dentures was 1% of the market, meaning that fabricating it is currently laboratories are out there or, or clinicians, 1% uh, of the market. That number has grown. It's still in the single digits, but it's grown, and imagine how much it's going to grow even more. So, and we'll talk about that. But for opportunities in laboratories, it's growing by 5.7% of growth for dental prosthetics to 2026 and beyond. That's really a driving factor for a lot of these digital dentures and, and the growth. As I said, there are single digits currently. But what's happening is a lot of the, um, you know, a lot of patients and specifically a lot of dentists and emerging dentists that are leaving, coming out of dental school, there's a huge adoption that's occurring. And in the next five years, we'll see an even more dramatic adoption as not only is the technology proven itself and has been uh, shown with um, a lot of uh, research and, and assessment that it's it's a a beneficial uh, workflow, but also for a lot of these these new younger de dentists that are coming out, th this is what they've adopted, this is what they've learned. They, they prefer to have a digital uh, scan over um, the actual, um, you know, any kind of impression and, and as well as for the patient. So that number is going to grow exponentially and in the next five years, you're going to see a, a significant greater digital adoption than we've ever seen before. Uh, there are estimated of 40 million people in the U.S. that are wearing digital dentures. And that is a, just that alone is a $240 billion lab market and a $1.1 trillion dental market, clinical market. Now imagine, as I said, it's 1%. There are, and, and perhaps let's just say now it's that statistic of 1% is about two or three years old. So let's just call it, it's still single digits, but let's just say 10%. That means that there's still another 90% out there that is, that is, for our, you know, that is able, we're able to tap into and really to generate some revenues in a great way. Now, why is that important and why are we looking to, to grow and, and make this digital process better? Ultimately, certainly for the clinicians, it's a better process without a doubt, and I'll, I'll dive into um, the benefits for the laboratory, but ultimately it's the patients. It, and these patients are perhaps our mothers, our fathers, our uncles, our brothers, our sisters, our cousins. And if they're not ours, they're certainly somebody's and they deserve to have the best process, the best material, the best workflow, the best way to fabricate um, in this situation a digital denture. It's something that is really true and near to me because ultimately what we're looking for is not just a workflow that will become better for our laboratories and revenue, but we're here as a service industry to serve our patients. And this becomes a, a, a significantly better process than we've seen before. Now, how is that serving our patients? I mean, certainly for the looking at the comparison between CAD CAM digital denture and analog, you can see that it's, it's significantly shortened. And in fact, you know, even with this is a you can see that rather than having a prolonged three to five appointments with with digital dentures you can shorten it quite a bit to where there's different workflows that they, some claim you can bring it down to two appointments some claim to three but it's certainly less than what you would with an analog because some of the um the, the interfaces are uh you know, combined, um, like the bite block, and, and I'll show you. And I have also recorded of a design of how that, you know, in order to visualize what the end result are. But for the patients also, look at it as the patients. You know, this is a video, it's a little dated, but it shows what the experience of a patient is in an analog format. Sorry, my apologies. And 
obviously this is the new of what the modern clinical office is. So that's, again, looking at it, not only is it efficient and consistent, but think of the experience, the overall experience that the patient is receiving, you know, where the analog impression makes them gag and then they have to come for five appointments, if not even more, to where now this modern new age type of um, clinical office is scanning their mouths and shortening their appointments. So it's truly a win-win, certainly for the patient, for the clinician, and in a great way for the laboratory too. So digital dentures is something that is here to stay and is only going to grow in, in its ability for um, really producing revenue streams and um, truly you know, modernizing the dental laboratory. Now, there's ways of entering into this digital dentures and you know different laboratories are in different positions and some may want to jump in with both two feet others may want to just try and then see how it evolves there's opportunities within digital dentures and there's certainly many many factors that offer those opportunities you can and you can select from actually being able to 3d print the teeth as well as the resin base. You can, you know, there's different solutions that provide you with carded teeth. There's different solutions that are mono, meaning that from the same, as you see up here, uh, from the same material, 3D printed or milled, you can have the same tooth color and then actually layer some acrylic or composite on it, um, as well as have individual carded teeth in order to fit in here and then you can either do 3d printing or uh, milling but the results are what the outcomes are and there's different opportunities for doing each now the order form is where where is the hub where you really have to you know indicate what kind of of um, workflow you want to follow and again this is it within three shape and i'll show you a design that a friend of mine has um, shared with us um of how to, he designs it's a six minute video it is a little sped up uh but just for you to get the uh, you know the idea and and if you're not a three shape user it'll give you a, a good flavor of what uh what the design looks like uh and if you are a three shape user which uh, i think m many of us most of us here are um you you'll be able to see exactly how it, it's set up but in the order form you're set up by selecting the artificial teeth first and foremost selecting the type of denture base you're going to be doing whether you're doing a a you know a carded or a mono or whether it's separating the um the arch with the, the denture base or even you can even do it in quadrants you can even print it individual teeth or i prefer to do it in three meaning the uh the, the further distal and the anterior sections or you can do it in one arch it's really there's different workflows there's different um companies as well as people that are engaging this space that that feel that one workflow is better than the other. Um, they're all great. It's really what is most efficient and works best for your laboratory that is great for you. Uh, but the opportunity is there and it's it's very wide open. So, um, you know, Rami um, Abaranda is a good friend of mine. He's in the Middle East that has done some incredible things with his design. And this was his actual design that he shared a video of his design. And he's doing here an upper and a lower. And as you saw in the order form, he, he selected the, the type of denture base and as well as the teeth. So once you scan, you scan the, the bite block. As you see here, you have to parallel the occlusal planes and in order to bring in the teeth. Now this, this part is important in order to bring in the proper library. Uh, then you want to be able to characterize the points. Uh, and these are the incisal papilla. These are all the landmarks that we know in, in dentures. So the information and the knowledge and the expertise are still very relevant this the software cannot fabricate it or design a a denture without the dental intelligence of the dental technician so after we isolate or we identify rather the the landmarks we're able to then draw the boundaries and we know how important the boundaries are for for dentures and digital dentures is no different once you create that you can still just like in three shape you can make those uh quick edits um by just right clicking onto a handle and then choosing um a, a fast edit design um, and it makes it much easier, as you can see, within perhaps 30 seconds, you can actually create a base plate of sort, uh, digitized, virtual that is, and select it all the way throughout. Again, we've already identified the landmarks and we know, and now we're establishing where the denture base is. So he's going to go again into fast edit mode. 
so you can see it's a, it's a very very quick process and it's really remarkable how fast a digital denture can can be fabricated so once then once we establish the base plate we have to establish any kind of undercuts we'll block them out virtually the path of insertion as well we're going to look um, here we're blocking out we're creating some more space a little bit of relief and then we're bringing the denture base back on and now we're going to be selecting the denture teeth now the denture teeth, as you see on the bottom here, have multiple cards, and it's just like libraries. Uh, you would have to import their three shape comes with their libraries, but there are other libraries that are available. Uh, whatever you're comfortable with, certainly depending on the workflow and the design you're going to be using, um, you'll know which library of teeth to pick. If it's carded teeth, obviously those are the ones you're going to be picking. If it's printed or, or milled uh, individually, again, there are libraries that are available for that, both in 3Shape and for purchase. So, you know, not much needs to change from the way you're doing things. If you're fabricating currently um, dentures and your dentists are accustomed to one type of mold or one type of um, manufacturer, you can provide that for them. So the continue, the the consistency and the continuity uh, remains. The patient and your clinician are receiving the same quality of work and the same level of work, if not even um, you know enhanced with digital. So the same can apply, and you can get a really really nice uh, digital denture rather quickly in order to, and then go ahead and manufacture it. Once you select the the actual, let me see. Uh, just a little bit longer just to, it processed it and what the um the software has now is the ability of also creating um you know different kind of festooning and different kind of stipulation you can actually have a heavy light and medium so even in that sense having finishing and the finishing of the denture becomes so much simpler uh, because again the software does the work for you you have to tell the software what needs to be done but it does, it really does do the work for you. And as you see here, well, it went quickly, but you can see that it, it provided a, a really lifelike um, anatomy and uh, characterizations that will require very little post-processing once it's, again, 3D printed or milled, whichever design uh, the process is. So now, as you see here in the video, and certainly, um, you know, we're now designing the mandibular arch, um, you know, same process. You can still go ahead and change anything uh, as you go through. Um, once you you bring in or import your library, and then your teeth are over it. Um, the 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 planes is where it's really critical to make sure that the planes are are properly uh, aligned so that you can do. Now, equilibrating or you know looking at the bite and how to actually set it up is you are able to do this virtually. Um, as well, you know, in, in the CAD software. And again, these processes are meant for efficiency so that there's less work. You know, allow the technology to do the bulk of the heavy lifting for you. If you're finding yourself doing the heavy lifting for the technology, again, goes back to my uh, first slide, is technology truly carrying us doing what we need for in order to get optimal results or is it that we need to do something to get the optimal result from the technology the first one is the correct answer where you need to find technology and innovations um, similar to the ones that i'm showing you that are going to make the overall workflow that much easier and better where the outcome is is better and easier to achieve uh, that's what you're looking for in technology. That's what you're looking for innovations. And I'm happy to say that the technology is already here. You can see it in, in the design, uh, but certainly we'll dive into the manufacturing or the material science as well as the hardware of how to get this virtual design, this very nice design into what would be a, um, you know, either 3D printed or milled. Uh, much of the focus here in this lecture is going to be on 3D printing, but we will speak a little bit about milling as well. Um, and then you can look at the, the different uh, facets. Now, keep in mind, this obviously can still be characterized. This is acrylic. This is a um, in material that's going to be, um, you know, uh, finished just like you would normally. Uh, but you still have the ability of taking it to any any level or any step that you want. Uh, it's really up to you and your control. It's your laboratory. It's your dental intelligence. It's what your customers have come to grow from you. Uh, to, to learn to get from your laboratory. So none of that should ever change, if not even get better. 
uh, and, and technology and, and specifically digital dentures can afford that for you. So there are different ways of manufacturing, as I said. There's the milled and the 3D printed opportunities. You can mill uh, denture base and, t and, and teeth. Um, you can also get carded teeth and the same with 3D printed. Um, th these are, as you can see here, are um, you know the 3D printed, uh, both a full arch as well as a denture uh, base, and you can really bring them all, um, loot them together uh, in a very clean and easy manner. Or you can use the monochrome or denture, where um, is also an option. Uh, many people use this. Quite honestly, many laboratories use the monochrome, and just over time, is what I found is that they're using it for the try-ins, and then they convert. Um, for a obviously a, um, a denture base and, and printed or milled teeth or carded, whichever way have you. So the opportunities are there to be able to 3D print um, a try-in denture and, and with the same file be able to produce a final denture. Uh, again, the workflow is really, there are multiple workflows and the ability of accomplishing or achieving the end result is just where, where the laboratory is more comfortable to receive, to gain their um, their end result and obviously you can always outsource um, if you're not in the digital denture world or game um, you need to ask yourself why not uh, the opportunities are there um, you can certainly service your your clients uh, doctors and you know oftentimes uh, surveys in the past have when asking the doctor you know they, they somehow utilize two and a half laboratories I have no idea who that half a laboratory is but needless to say you know perhaps the, your client that's sending you the bulk of their work uh, may not be sending you dentures only because they're unaware that you can fabricate or manufacture dentures. Uh, so let them know, and specifically, if, you know, you're getting into digital dentures, the equipment and the material and the ability and the dental intelligence is all there uh, for them to benefit from. So the if you're not currently doing digital dentures, um, you may want to look deeply into how to actually create that. So whether you're milling, whether you're creating an arch, so here you're milling, uh, you're 3D printing a full arch. This is um, um, a denture uh, base that is printed. You can see being that it is printed from the same machine, the same design, the fits are absolutely remarkable. Or you can opt to use carded teeth, as you see up here, uh, which the options are, are still there. Now, diving into 3D printing, um, I'm going to just highlight and share with you some remarkable attributes to to some of these um, you know technologies. As I said, material is a part of technology, but certainly the hardware is a, a part of it. And and you know, open architecture is important certainly because you, you, as the um, as the space or the market grows, you'll see more competition, and there is currently competition, but more will emerge and more innovations and so on and so forth. So being able to utilize in your laboratory the ability of, of really being, you know, obviously researching and seeing what is the best, um, you know, action moving forward for your laboratory, but being able to plug in as new innovations come in is really critical to the success and validity of your laboratory. So you know, Envision Tech has a very nice printer that is um, actually, it's a DLP, it's a digital light processor, but they have something that is is slightly different in the CDLM LM DLP, where it's a continuous um, projection. So it really provides for a much faster as well as a, um, you know, the, the finish really provides for a great um, solution. Now, there is also the Form Labs. It is considerably slower um, than the Invision Tech that I just shared with you, just it's simply because it's the SLA technology, um, the end result are, are still um, very good because, you know, for a laboratory, again, different laboratories may require different printers depending on their volume of work as well as what it is that they're looking to um, invest into their technology. The, what I'm trying to, sh to share with you is that the opportunities for every laboratory is available at every price point in whichever way uh, that works best for your laboratory. So Envision Tech is a phenomenal um, you know, 3D printer, certainly Form Labs, and I'll share with you two others that I really happen to like very much. This is, the again, the Envision Tech with the CDLM. It allows you for speed because it reduces uh, separation forces. And it's also 30% less um, as far as material-wise, as well as the isotropic 
properties are consistent in all directions and really provides for a very uh, accurate and consistent and repeatable even the way positioning it with the nest allows you to be able to produce a, a tremendous amount this is a, a, an older slide that a vision tech has shared with me and i just wanted to to share this along because looking at the costs and this is a monochrome that you know john mcmillan who's who's a phenomenal technician was able to use gc gradia so it was a monochrome denture that he then characterized but at the end of it all the cost of a denture was about seven seven dollars and fifty cents now that's just material wise certainly labor and uh, talent is added on but that's you know those costs may be varying but material wise it's it becomes less than what you would in material buy in an analog um, type of denture so it's something to consider certainly now this material i'm, I'm very excited about because it, it offers for uh, a digital denture specifically that is really really unique not only in the denture base but also in the quality and the look of their teeth and the reason being is because they are, it's actually ceramic like in strength in a bottle right it synthesized long chain chemistry and it's polymerized at high power 385 dlp and it creates a cross-link polymer that is significantly stronger, better, and it's um, it's formulated and it's FDA approved, obviously. Now, as far as the, because of its formulation, you can see here that it's ceramic-like where it's three times more resistant to fracture, as well as two times more resistant to moisture. So obviously as a digital denture, that's something that, you know, is certainly very, you know, needed and, and uh, as a material because absorption of any kind of liquid or water in the body ends up becoming a, a nasty thing, whether it's smell, taste, and so on and so forth, as well as fracture resistance. So the statistics are, are really there. As far as shades, I, I found this to be very, very unique and different because the Flexera base shades comes with five different colors for the, the denture base. So you're able to characterize or allow the material to characterize even easier and better to what your end result would be. Again, different laboratories have different needs and different wants because they have different clientele. Uh, but the opportunities are certainly here, depending on whichever level that it is that you want to approach this, the opportunities are there to achieve that. Now, uh, Roland DG3 Shape came out with a, a smaller version. Again, this is a uh, for perhaps a small size laboratory because the footprint is very small and the buildable plate is. But again, this is a perfect example where if you're doing perhaps, you know, uh, uh, two two dentures uh, a, a week or five dentures a week doesn't mean that you should turn away that work from your doctor because when you turn away work from a doctor you may be losing out on other opportunities and other work from that same doctor so you can absolutely accept this type of work um, from any doctor and your doctor and certainly you can grow from your laboratory so depending on again going back to depending on your laboratory and your workflow there are so many options and so many opportunities to really meet your your need to meet your dentist demands uh, and this is a perfect example so the it's a cute little printer it's a S, uh, SOL LCD 3D printer so it's a little bit different than DLP and SLA it's an LCD it's very fast uh, it has UV power that matches and exceeds that of DLP um, and plus it this particular printer is provides you with an opportunity to to you know crowns models surgical uh, certainly denture they do have the base and the teeth as well as the occlusal keep in mind it does have a small uh, build plate uh, but nonetheless the indications are really remarkable and if uh, digital dentures which as I said earlier every laboratory should be offering that that's a, uh, a really plus plus now the Asiga printer is is really you know, hearing some wonderful things about it, and I've I've had the pleasure of working with it, and it's really you know the workhorse um, that is said. Now there's two different sizes. There's a small and medium uh, for the the UV, which is for the small and medium laboratory, as well as you have the high capacity or the high volume. And I'll show you in a little bit how much you can actually fit into one of these large volume ones. 
um, at different price points. Now, this uh, the Sega actually took and, and took it a step further and validated uh, with Three Shape. Their 93 uh, percent of data points are correct within 50 microns. Now, you know, 50 microns is the um, the benchmark for for fixed. It's not 100 is for removable, but they still assess this as with 50. And you can see that the only areas of disparity are towards the very very distal. So the longer the span, the more cross arch it is. The the um, you know the more perhaps uh, any kind of uh, discrepancies may come in. So 93% of the model that was printed at 50 microns. I bet you if it was 100 microns, it would be more like 98%. Uh, but nonetheless, it's it, the accuracy is really really tremendous in it. Now for the pro. This is a, a slide that I, I grabbed from them. It's a 4K mode, but just to give you a, you know, and, and granted this is for models, but you can still extrapolate from this more so with dentures, just again, for the laboratory, depending on the volume and what it is that you're trying to accomplish. But the bill plate and the nesting is what's what I, with the Sega is, is something that is really remarkable because you can actually place them vertically as you see in this on the picture below. But if you're doing models at 100 microns, which again, for, for digital dentures, that's all the accuracy that you need, um, you can print in 20 minutes, nine to 10, nine to 11 models flat horizontally. If it's a 50 microns, you double that. So if it's a crown and bridge or a fixed case, um, you certainly want to use the 50 microns for uh, removable, you can certainly use the 100 microns. Or if you feel you want to print everything in, in 50 microns, that's your prerogative, but it will take a little bit longer. Now, if you look at the same scenario with the 100 microns, but rather than having it horizontal, having it vertical, as you see in the picture below, now we're more than doubling our in this scenario as models, but dentures will follow the same, but you can accomplish 20 to 26, we'll call it dentures, at 100 micron uh, accuracy in less than an hour. That's, that's the power of technology. That's the power of what digitizing can allow us, and that's where we need both the hardware and the material to be optimized in order to create this. And you can see, you need a significant amount of um, volume because within an hour you can in theory with this printer pr produce or fabricate uh, let's just call it 25 dentures an hour you you can do the math and certainly with your profit margin and your price points if you can garner that kind of volume and doing that kind of volume then certainly a larger 3d printer would be the the better way to go because you can accomplish 25 dentures within less than an hour and um, from so design of a denture can be any depending on the complexity about 20 minutes and then you know obviously you can 3d print 25 dentures within under an hour um, in order to then manufacture and process it so the output is truly remarkable and i always love seeing these outputs when i when they come out of the and this is how clean it comes out this is what obviously dries um it doesn't it comes out of the vat a little bit uh still wet but once it dries this is what you can see and you can imagine how quickly and how productive uh your denture department can become um, this would be, so let's just say something like this would be, as I said, less than an hour, 50 minutes of print. And then depending on if we're carding, or I think if memory serves it correct, this was a full arch that we printed out of um, uh, Trasana that we were able to then place right in. So that was, if memory serves it correct, was about 40 minutes. So within an hour and hour and a half, uh, you're able to finish and then send this over to your finishing department within the denture. And that's within an hour and a half. Um, so, and you can accomplish at least 20 dentures within an hour and a half finished where both the, the, the teeth as well as the um, denture base are fabricated and then even finished. And then all you need to do is just pulse finish it and, and process it. So the opportunities are truly there. And as I said in the very beginning, one thing with the Sega that they've been really actively working on um, is validating other materials. Because one of the things also with when it comes to materials is that, you know, they're obviously advertised to the dentist as well. So when a dentist gets advertised or sees something or speaks in a, in a um, you know, in a professional group setting, whether it's a, a, 
a study club or whatever have you, and they hear of a material, they may call upon your laboratory to either inquire about the material or actually request you fabricating uh, a, a restoration with that material. So you want to always provide your laboratory with a mechanism to be able to offer that material to that dentist um, and not turn them away. Because again, if you're not doing it, perhaps the laboratory that you will try next will, and then uh, uh, you may subsequently lose business. So the ASIGAS is validated for many, many, um, obviously these are not 450 materials on this, but uh, certainly I could only fit however many I was able to uh, screenshot. But you know, all the popular, whether it's Keystone, whether it's Colzer, whether it's Whipix, uh, whether it's Voco, Argon, I mean, there's so many different materials, GC of course, so many different materials that you can plug in and utilize. And certainly they offer um, digital denture materials as well. Now, why 3D printing, right? We've spent a little bit of time 3D talking about 3D printing um, because it allows for application galore, right? It's driven by a very wide and well-funded focus in research. So whether you're doing a digital denture, whether you're doing a mouth guard, whether you're going doing bleach trays, whether you're doing partial dentures, which I'll talk about in a little bit, um, digital dentures or even temporaries, I mean, surgical guides, whatever the case may be, you can absolutely utilize technology and innovations to be able to afford that and, and really provided the, the most optimal answer or optimal solution uh, for your client dentist. And ultimately, we're doing the same and providing that level of excellence uh, to the patient, which is very important. Now, I don't want to discard. I'll be remiss to say that uh, milling machines are, you know, milling is certainly a function. And if, if uh, some laboratories are utilizing this and, and doing this really, really well, um, there are great materials, which I'll share with you in a little bit uh, as to what some of the, the materials that I found that are phenomenal and fantastic for this. Um, but the opportunity is there. There are materials that you can mill uh, the puck, you can mill uh, the teeth. You can still benefit in the same order form as I showed you um, by selecting which process you can go through. You can do monochromat, you can, anything you can think of and anything that is offered, you can do it. Again, the idea is there's not one technology that's better than the other. I'm sure you get, you get five or six technicians in a room, you'll get a debate as to what is better. My stance and my position is always that the technology and the materials are there. It's just a matter of the laboratory, what their best process and that's their best workflow um, is for them. And that may be different for different laboratories. Ultimately, the end result has to be that it needs to be a, a, a sound denture that it will benefit the patient's you know, life, health, aesthetics, and so on and so forth. The means by which a laboratory gets there is really dependent on the laboratory. And certainly laboratories may argue one way or another, and that's perfectly fine, but it's really depending on your individual laboratory, your individual volume, your clientele, what is their demand? What is your demand? What are you looking to, to achieve? It's, it's a business um, and a workflow kind of choice and consideration. And certainly the options, as I said, are there for you to be able to really dive in and see where things are. So de depending on the mill, whatever it is that you can use, uh, certainly the the IMS is the Roland has a, a again a both a nesting software for it as well as uh, other innovations. VHF is I validated quite a bit with uh, um, with digital uh, opportunities as well as the Mangirbach and so much more. The whatever you have in your laboratory and depending on the how far or where you want to venture into digital dentures. And again, I, I truly believe that once you try digital dentures, you will you'll be hooked and you'll want more and more and certainly grow that space or that market within your laboratory. Uh, but you can enter. Some people like to dive in with both feet in. Some people like to just dip their toes. That's fine. As long as we're moving forward and progressing forward and moving in the right direction, you're always doing what's good and what's right for you. Um, with Keystone, now this this material, key mill, is one that I'm I'm very very fond of because it even has even the veins and, and certainly um, you can utilize this as to with carded teeth and again you can loot them once you finish milling it, um, but it provides for a really great puck, a holistic cup 
puck um, without any worry of any kind of porosity, any voids in between. And it's really a very, very aesthetic outcome. Now, truth be told, one of the reasons why I do favor 3D printing over milling is the scalability of it, is the volume of it. Uh, as you saw, in an hour and a half, we're able to produce, a laboratory is able to produce with one printer, approximately, let's just call it 25 uh, dentures. That would be, not, not almost, that would be impossible to do with a milling machine, only because a milling machine requires that one puck and it mills that one puck. And, and only when it's done, which it, the milling tends to be a little lengthy as far as the strategy, but let's just call it about an hour to mill a single um, uh, denture base. And then you would have to load up the next puck and, and the next again. So for scalability, for volume, certainly 3D printing provides for a better, I think, workflow. Um, but it, again, it goes back to the laboratory. It goes back to what is your preference. You know, some laboratories may not do the volume and, they, and may, may want to only do the milling, which is perfectly fine. As long as the end result is a superior product and superior restoration, I should say, for the patient, the means by which you've attained it is really up to the laboratory. It needs to have the excellence for the patient. Whether you milled it or whether you 3D printed it um, is irrelevant. The patient isn't wiser to it um, one way or another. It's They just want the sound, good, um, aesthetic denture that would last them a very, very long time. So that provides for a really, you know, and it's more of a business conversation, a business choice, and also looking closely at your laboratory. How many are you producing? If you're producing a volume of perhaps, as I said, my example, two dentures a week, you may be fine with just milling. It's completely up to you. But if you're producing more, or if by milling it, it reduces the time that you have to mill your crown and bridge, then you may want to look into investing into a 3D printer to grow the digital denture space, but it will also grow other things like surgical guides, like mouth guards, like so many other things you can get in, involved with uh, uh, bleach trays and, and so much more. So open up your eyes and see what it is that you can do as a business. But digital dentures is definitely a focal point that you don't want to miss. It's a, it's a real opportunity. It's a real huge market. And as I said, 90%, and I'm being very, very conservative with this, 90% is still out there. Um, waiting to be, you know, it, certainly some of it is going to be on the analog, but I really think over the next five years, you'll see a, a, a huge transition, uh, more so towards digital. Uh, and that really has a lot to do with the emerging or the adoption that's happening in the market. It's it's growing, uh, you know, steadily uh, with the same trend over uh, for for several months now. And, it, and I expect it to grow more and more. Uh, eventually, Digital is going to be the only means of production, perhaps, you know, many years from now. But nonetheless, it's not something that's that's a fad. It's not something that's going away. It's something that's only going to become strengthened and better as we go through. And at the end of the day, that's what we're all accomplishing, the innovations and technology. That's our focal point. And how I started with this is that that technology can really set us apart and really move us forward. Um, and I truly believe that digital dentistry is just that mechanism, uh, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it with the technology, we're seeing it with the hardware, we're seeing it with the innovations, we're seeing it with material, and there's a lot more coming. Um, so get excited, you know, get into this industry, I mean, it's, it, into this space of digital, uh, and Digital Dentures offers the same type of, you know, options and growth and robust growth that you can see um, with several years ago with the fixed side. Um, I do believe that that will be, it will model the same kind of trend and the same kind of path. And in fact, even faster uh, than than the adoption was on the fixed. Now, we there are also options and, you know, we, we haven't spoken at all about this, um, partial dentures. Now, partial dentures is a part of, of removable and is a part of uh, an, a, a way of doing digital dentures as well. And these are some products that I happen to really enjoy and I want to highlight. Um, you know, so you can certainly 3D cast printed wax. You can SLM. Um, you can either print it out in, in, in wax and you can even design your sprues and then 
cast it if if Chrome Cobalt is what you so desire. Um, you can SLM it as well. But these products on the on the bottom here is something that I know a lot of patients are absolutely love. And the acetyl, the Zerlux acetyl, is a great great product. Um, because it allows patients, first of all, it's very lightweight, it's biocompatible, and it also, what patients are reporting, it just disappears in their mouth. Uh, specifically, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Visiclear, which you see here. Um, you can you can have clasps in clear, you can have clasps in tooth color, um, you can have clasps in pink, or you can have the palatal area or the uh, the bars in pink, whatever it is, and you can also repair this material. Uh, you can add a clasp, you can have a, a clear uh, framework and you wanted a tooth color clasp, but you can then blend the two and add the two. Now that requires a, a separate peripheral thing, uh, but nonetheless, you can mill uh, from these three. And I can tell you that the acetyl, the, the Visiclear in particular, the clear one, is something that has garnered, patients literally say just disappears in their mouth because you don't see the the unsightliness of the chrome cobalt. They don't feel the taste of the metal, they don't, the, the conductivity of it. Uh, it really provides the patient with a, what they feel like is their all natural teeth. And this is all done with digital uh, equipment, digital hardware um, in pucks, and this is obviously milled. Um, but the opportunities are, are great. So if you're, if you're a laboratory that is not offering partial dentures, this could be a opportunity to offer partial dentures. If that becomes your gateway into getting into the removable space, uh, if you're not there yet, exercise that have the opportunity uh to really get into because i i can tell you that that space or that market within your laboratory if you're not there yet will grow and even if you are offering dentures to to your clientele digital dentures will absolutely without a doubt allow you to scale uh your volume and therefore allow you to garner more revenue for your bottom line and offer more to your clinician um, so that that part will grow so the options are there, the technology is there, the solutions and the innovations are there, and it's just a matter of each laboratory really seeing what it is their entrance point and what it is that they're looking to. Now, I may be speaking to several people here in this uh, webinar right now that are already into digital dentures and are fabricating, and, and that's fantastic, but are you scaling it? What can you do? And hopefully this, um, you know, this webinar and this uh, um, session has provided you with some clarity, whether you're a laboratory looking into getting involved digital dentures. And again, I cannot recommend it strongly enough. Every laboratory should. Um, if you, hopefully this gave you the, the value and the, and the knowledge and the resources to at the very least ask the right questions and start making informed decisions. If you're a laboratory that is currently offering digital dentures, hopefully this added value where you can see other pathways or other workflows that can enhance and, and make your um, laboratory even that much more efficient uh, and provide you, your dentist and your patients with uh, the best and most optimal outcome. So with that said, I just wanna thank everybody for their time. Hope you found some great, great value in this and hope you're, um, you'll be doing digital dentures. If you're not yet, you certainly I, I recommend, and it's some it's a space to get excited about, and it's something that is absolutely only going to continue to grow as we um, as we see in the near very near future. So happy digital denturing. So if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. The first one is, what would be a good path to follow to get into digital dentures? First steps, really. Yeah, so that's a it's a very good question. Um, for one, you know, coming to these kind of webinars so that you can become informed as to what would be the best path for you. As I said, you know, whether you're a one-person lab or a thousand-person lab, um, that path may will look completely different. Um, so each laboratory is going to have a a different need or a different demand that they need to find a solution for. So certainly with small laboratories you know i me personally I, if it's a, a laboratory that's looking into this but is currently digitized meaning that you already have a mill you already have a 3d printer you already have three shape then it's really easy to integrate into this by you know so you would need to get a module for digital dentures and obviously the the um the materials 
that your 3D printer or mill machine will accept. Um, if you're not digitized yet, certainly I would explore looking at b being digitized um, and and taking the leap of faith because this is not going away. This is something that you want to harness, uh, you really want to utilize, and really most everybody that I come across that have kind of were on the fence and jumped in, I absolutely love it. They're excited about it. They're re-energized about it. And it's really a, a means to a cleaner end and a more predictable and consistent repeatable end. So taking those steps and really learning what it is that is digital dentures and what is in the market and how and what you need for your laboratory to fill that demand that you need. And it could look differently for different laboratories, but this is the right place to be. Okay, I think we have a question from an attendee that needs to sign off. Um, he wanted to know if the webinar is recorded, and it is, and you'll be able to view it on YouTube in the next day or two under Zon Academy. Um, but we have another question for you, Daniel. It's, are digital dentures easy to repair, or can you just print a new one easily? So that's a great question. The answer is they, you know, depending on the material, mo all of them are repairable. Some are easier than others. But what I see is that oftentimes it's so inexpensive to just go ahead and print a new one um, that most laboratories prefer that because rather than repairing it, look, with any kind of material, if it ever broke and we're repairing it, that's the weakest link within that, that restoration. So most laboratories, wow. it's inexpensive enough and it's quick enough, they would prefer to refabricate um, you know, a new denture rather than repairing it. But the materials are repairable for sure. Okay, great. And the next question is, to reprint an STL file is usually saved? Yes. Yes, so there's a, a database and within 3Shape, you know, depending again on, on the volume, I do suggest purging it every 30 to 60 days, meaning moving it to a external drive so that you, because those are, are files that you want to keep. Uh, because let's just say, you know, six months from now, a year from now, Mrs. Jones' dog ate her denture. She doesn't even have to present herself at the at the dental office. I mean, she should, but the laboratory can manufacture and send the denture directly to the dental office and with a little bit of adjustment. So that's one appointment that, you know, we don't have to start from scratch. Mrs. Jones doesn't have to come to the dental office, get a new impression, new models, new bite rims, new setup, new everything. We already have the STL file, and assuming that nothing's changed drastically, we can reproduce that. So even if it falls, even if the dog ate it, even anything like that, we can reproduce the denture rather quickly and and have it at the dental office uh, before the patient even comes. And it's a much shortened um, uh, dental appointment, so therefore it doesn't it, it's not um, it doesn't cost the dentist their time and their full money. And it's a great experience for the patient that they can so quickly get a uh, an extra. Truth be told, a lot of clinicians and, and laboratories as well oftentimes produce two digital dentures for the patient, one for them to wear every day and one as a backup. It's so inexpensive enough and it's an added service um, that, you know, you can either charge for or you can, it's 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 a business decision on your laboratory, but nonetheless, it's the, it's an added service the patients and dentists absolutely love because they have a second set of, of dentures and it doesn't cost the laboratory really anything more than just, again, $7.50-ish around. Okay, 